Welcome to Refreshing Point Ministries, where Dr. Rick Layton is pastor and teacher. We thank you for your continued support of this ministry. For products and church information, please visit us on our website at www.ricklaytonministries.org. Now, get ready to receive the word as we are changing your world through faith. How many of you, uh, don't raise your hand, have a prayer life? Probably everyone in here has a prayer life. I asked several people on this week, how's your prayer life? And um, the majority of them said, it's, it's good, Pastor, but it could be better. How many of you in here believe that, I, I would like you to raise your hand if you wouldn't. How many of you believe that your prayer life could be better? Could, could be better, you could increase it. Probably every one of us in here, no matter how much we pray, uh, we could intensify it, we could increase our prayer life. Listen at this. Uh, I used to say this just because I heard my pastor say it, Dr. Dollar, but I've come to truly believe this in my spirit, that every failure in life is a prayer failure. Every failure in life is a prayer failure or it's because of some area of prayer. Look at Luke uh, 18 and 1. Let's go to Luke 18 and 1. I've noticed that in my life that whenever I'm in prayer on a regular basis, whenever I intensify my prayer, it's hard for the devil to get to me. It's hard for the devil to discourage me. It's hard for the devil to get me depressed. Uh, it's really hard for me to get upset with people whenever I stay in prayer. But whenever I find myself slack in prayer, slack in my prayer life, uh, things get to me real easy. As, as we used to say, can I get a witness? <laughs> things get to me real easy when I spend no time in prayer. I thank God for your, your, your first lady here, Pastor Barbara. She loves to pray. She loves to pray. And uh, she keeps me on my toes in that area. Let's go to St. Luke 18. I start getting upset about something. She said, Rick, you need to go pray. <laughs> you need to go pray. Look what it says here in Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men, come on, ought always to pray and not to faint. That men what? How often should men pray? Always. How much should men pray? Always. That men ought always, listen at this, to pray. And then he goes on to say, and not to faint. I used to put it like this often, not to give up, cave in, and quit. Men ought always to pray and not to give up, cave in, and quit. When things come against you, what should you do? When people talking about you, what should you do? Pray. When you don't understand what you're going through, what should you do? Pray. Have you ever been going through things in your life and you just felt like giving up? You felt like fighting? You felt, how many of you ever felt like fighting since you've been saved? Now, I, we're going to have an altar call for people that lie. I, I, your pastor, listen, your pastor has felt like fighting more than once since I've been saved. I was talking to one of my pastors here, Pastor Mike, and Pastor Mike said, uh, Pastor, I'm so glad that the Lord helped me in this area. He said, before he helped me in this area, I felt like knocking some people out. He said, once someone asked him, said, run some things by me. He said, which fist you want? <laughs> I felt like that before. Uh, I, I hate to say it. I wish that I didn't have to tell you this, but it has always been, I've always 
I've, I've lost the battle in those areas when my prayer life was, was slack. Even though I felt like doing some things, when my prayer life was up to par, I wouldn't faint. And sometimes not fainting is just holding your peace. Prayer is so very important. It is a key. It is the key to every victory in your life. This church was birthed out of prayer. Before I married Pastor Barbara, I went into prayer. Every key decision we ever made, we prayed first. Look what the Amplified says from this particular uh, verse. Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray. Listen at this. And not to turn coward. You mean when a person is not in prayer, they're subject to turn coward? And how many of you know that coward, a coward will do anything? Have you ever done any cowardly things? Men ought always to pray. He spake a parable uh, to the effect that they ought always to pray. Listen, and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. Whenever you find yourself doing things that's contrary to the word of God. It's a good chance that you have turned coward. That you have lost heart. That you have fainted. And that you have given up. I came this morning to stir you up. And tell you not to turn coward. Not to lose heart. Not to faint. And not to give up. Look at your neighbor and say I will not give up. Look back at them and say, it's time to pray, baby. <laughs> Come on now, it's time to pray. Before I came to this service, it was some things on my mind that wasn't of God. How many of you, before you got here this week, there were, there were some things this week on your mind that were not of God, and that meant that you had turned coward. Or, thank you, Holy Spirit, that, meant, that means that you possibly were about to turn coward. This week, Barbara, she, Barbara, you kept looking at me. You didn't say anything. Two or three times you looked at me and you smiled. And I, I said, what's wrong? She said, ain't nothing wrong. Bro. Something have to be wrong for me to look at you. <laughs> but I was meditating. I was in deep thought. You know, you can meditate on the wrong thing too long or so long until you turn coward. That's when it's time to pray. Now, before I get into these keys, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to run this by you. Those of you that have a prayer language, that speak in tongues, that you, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, that's when it's time to really start praying in the spirit and other tongues when you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do and you're at your wit's end and you feel like you're about to give up, that's the time to begin to edify yourself, to build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the, what you mean, Pastor, build yourself up? What you mean? Praying in the spirit. Right now, I want you in here. This is a Holy Ghost field church. Lift your hands and let's pray for a minute in the spirit. You don't have to get wild now. That's another thing. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. 
You can start praying in the spirit when you get ready and you can stop when you get ready. I'm going to say some other things, too, while I'm on this note. This is really not in the immediate message. But this is one of the things that Satan fights today is the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. He fights this more than anything because he knows that whenever you start to pray in the spirit, you get out of yourself. Glory to God. In other words, you begin to bypass your intellect. And you begin to build yourself up. You begin to charge yourself. Glory to God. And then guess what? I'm going to say this to you now. God, why you got me doing? When you pray in the spirit, it is the doorway into the other gifts of the spirit. You will not begin to see things on a regular basis until you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. God will begin to bring people before your face when you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, As a matter of fact, this is probably the Satan hate. Most of you, you, it was hard for you to get here this morning. You ain't even got to tell me that. <laughs> Why? Because God knew what I was going to talk about. And Satan knew I was going to talk about prayer. But he didn't even know I was going to get into this tongue thing. Satan would rather for me to talk about homosexuality than praying in other tongues. All right. Yeah. All right. Because he knows that if you keep praying in tongues, after a while you won't be homo and sexual. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, lift your hands on that. As a matter of fact, it takes faith to even pray in tongues. Because every time you speak out a syllable, you got to trust the Holy Ghost for the next syllable. And if you can trust God in one area, it builds your faith in other areas and you start to trust God in other areas. Ministries would like to thank you for viewing this message by Dr. Rick Layton. To order this message in its entirety, please call us at 877-227-8317 or visit us on our website at www.ricklaytonministries.org. Until next time, be blessed.